Good evening everyone. I welcome you all to the problem solving session of the NPTEL course on ice engines and gas turbines. I am Priti Bilanko. I am one of the TA for this course. So we will see some uh, previous assignment questions first and then we will go on to some solving some problems on Python cycle. The first question matches the following. Uh, paraffins, olefins, naphthene, diolefin, benzene. So paraffin is all straight uh, single chain carbon at uh, hydrocarbons. So that will have uh, uh, that will have a molecular formula C and H two N plus two. Say for example C uh, C for example uh, ethane. Ethane will have C H three single bond C H three. So this is C two H six. And similarly, if we go for uh, three carbon atoms, propane, we have C, C, C. There will be H3 here and H2 and H3. So there will be total C3, H8. So we can see it is N for carbon, it is uh, N, and for hydrogen, it is N2, N plus 2. And uh, olefins are uh, the ones with the uh, double bond. So it is CH sorry, carbon double bond carbon. Then we will have CH2H2. Then this is C2H4. So this will come to uh, olefin goes to this uh, CNH2N and paraffin is this. And uh, neptane is uh, again a single bond uh, carbon atom like paraffin or hydrocarbon like paraffin. Then uh, sorry, neptane is this, diolefin is this, and benzene is this. So option C is right. Next, for avoiding the ignition delay in compression ignition engine, engine should have a high higher percentage of C10 quality, lower percentage of C10 quality, high temperature of chamber, higher amount of oxygen. So, uh, with respect to C10 quality, the, the C10 number should be higher for uh, um, to reduce ignition delay. So, it should be high. And then the temperature of uh, high temperature uh, of the compression chamber will lead to lower ignition delay so this is higher and also for uh, more oxygen uh, presence will ensure that mm -hmm. the ignition delay is lesser and in the last class we had some uh, question uh, regarding the requirement of a lube oil and the question had something like the adhesive property Adhesive property of the lube oil should be high or should be low. So the right answer is high, uh, high, uh, because uh, the adhesive property means the ability of the oil or the lubrication grease or the oil to stick onto the metal surface. So in this case, if we have the uh, liner surface uh, with the lube oil, the, the property of the lube oil should be uh, such that uh, it should be able to stick to the wall surface so that it doesn't uh, easily fall off so uh, so this goes with all the uh, mechanical or uh, friction parts so the, if the lube oil uh, is present in the lined, uh, liner ball it should be able to stick there and not come out so then that means adhesive property should be higher adhesiveness of the lube oil Identify the stable compounds from the following paraffin, naphthene, benzene, olefin, diolefin. So, paraffin, naphthene, and benzene are uh, more stable compounds. 
when compared to olefin or diolefin. Match the phenomena with their reasons. Delay period is time taken by the maximum pressure to fall down. Ra delay in rapid combustion, third phase of combustion. So option C is right. Uh, delay period means uh, spray sprayed fuel gets diluted in combustion chamber, and delay period in rapid combustion. Delay in rapid combustion is time delay taken by the maximum pressure to fall, and third phase of combustion is fuel gets uh, ignited after the delay period. Detonation of knocking can be reduced by mild throttling. Fuel error ratio is higher, richer. Keeping main flame speed higher than secondary. Use of aromatic compounds in fuel. So, throttling will not help uh, in avoiding detonation. Uh, richer fuel air ratio will help in avoiding detonation because of the reduced temperature uh, we put more fuel because of the evaporation of the fuel the temperature of the charge gets lower and because of this we will have uh, less uh, knocking out detonation and keeping the main flame speed higher than the secondary so uh, if the main flame uh, from the spark plug that which comes is uh, much higher than the other flames which can form then we will avoid detonation or knocking and use of aromatic compounds will uh, have more resistance to uh, pre-ignition uh, pre or self-ignition so that will help in avoiding uh, knocking hydrogen is the best source of energy because it has higher CT number low emission number of ways to obtain hydrogen high or obtain number So uh, hydrogen doesn't have a higher CT number, rather it is a uh, it has very high octane number, mm -hmm. and uh, because it is then it, it is a naturally a, a change in fuel. And emission wise, it is low because there is no carbon, and because of this there is no carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide emissions, and there is no hydrocarbon emissions as well. Emission wise, there can be only NOx emissions, which can be addressed by EGR, SCR or some other uh, strategies. Uh, number of ways to obtain hydrogen, yes, so we can um, obtain hydrogen in many ways like renewable resources or from the biomass and many other uh, possibilities of that. So this is one advantage. And higher octane number, as I said, it is a good as engine fuel. The octane number will be around more than 100, it's around 110 or 120. So it is a good fuel for as engine. After injection in the individual pump and delivery system, uh, after injection in the individual pump and delivery system happens due to, okay, the after injection uh, happens due to improper rotation of plunger, inexact working of the spring, uh, back pressure generation in the delivery line, problems in the cam and follow mechanism. So, back pressure generation in the delivery line is the reason. So, and uh, yeah, after the closing of the first injection, because of generation in the back pressure in the line, then it can open again and inject. Uh, state your judgment on the following statements. On polymerization, the boiling point of compound increases. Polymerization increases the molecular weight. So polymerization is the process where uh, a small hydrocarbon becomes a long chain hydrocarbon. So both A and B are right. 
and uh, because of uh, long chain hydrocarbons will generally have uh, higher uh, boiling point rather uh, compared to a small chain hydrocarbons match the following uh, physical delay and chemical delay uh, characteristics of the fuel sudden mm. combustion of lately evaporated and mixed fuel finer ca customization uh, B is right. Physical delay is finer atomization delay, and chemical delay is characteristics of the fuel. State your judgment on the following statements: High sulfur content increases the possibility of the knocking. On an increase in sulfur content, the self-ignition temperature of fuel increases. A is correct, but B is wrong. C is correct. So, on adding sulfur content, the self ignition temperature decreases, and because of that, uh, there will be uh, high chances of marking. Heat transfer in the intake system reduces the efficiency of the engine because the increment in the heat transfer of intake system causes reduction in volumetric efficiency, increment in volumetric efficiency, reduction in uh, fuel or mixture density, reduction in air density only. So because of the heat transfer to the intake system, the, the charge will get heated and because of this density will get reduced and uh, so only less mass of air can get into the combustion chamber and uh, so that means uh, in CR right? reduction in volumetric efficiency and reduction in failure mixture density the principle of extensive surface is to Increase the area, increase the convection, increase the conduction, enhance the heat transfer through cooling system. So, uh, surface if we are increasing the surface area of the cylinder, then we will it is to increase the area, increase the convection heat transfer, and then enhance the heat transfer through cooling system. State to our friends in winter we add ethylene glycol to the fuel to increase the volume of the fuel. No, ethylene glycol is added to add to uh, increase the melting point of the uh, liquid or the fuel. State to our faults. Conduction and radiation are the main modes of heat transfer in engine cooling since convection can't be obtained in the proper manner. So, this is uh, false. Uh, convection and conduction are the main modes of heat transfer. The standard fuels used for defining CT number are uh, it's N heptane and heptamethylone. So it is uh, N CT and heptamethylone. Supercharger coupled with the engine shaft is considered brake power load heat transfer rated load, related load, ideal load or parasitic load. So, supercharger is uh, considered as a parasitic load. State your judgment on the following. If a person claims that he obtained a higher efficiency and no knocking observations when he used a normal car sphere for the high compression engine of Formula 1 car. So, he is wrong. So, uh, for Formula 1 car, we, they go for a higher uh, compression uh, engine and uh, they have a special fuel which uh, can resist knock and if you have uh,
but if you put a normal fuel normal gasoline with octane number of say 89 or 90 uh, into a fn engine then it uh, will undergo a lot of knocking uh, because of that uh, the efficiency decreases water cooled engines are less noisy because water cooling releases temperature more water jackets acts as a soundproof barrier water cooled engine do generate some con kesar is so the answer is waterproof water jackets will act as a soundproof barrier state to or false high higher the value of ctn number lower the chances of detonation and knocking in ca engines yeah this is true high ctn number means the ignition delay of the uh, fuel will be lower and uh, lower ignition delay means low knocking and uh, detonation Do you have any questions so far? No, sir. Okay, next problem. Uh, determine the specific work output, specific fuel consumption and cycle efficiency for a heat exchange cycle. Uh, figure 2.2 uh, having the following specifications. Compression, uh, compressor pressure ratio is 4.0. Turbine inlet temperature is uh, 1100 Kelvin. Uh, isentropic efficiency is given. Isentropic efficiency of compressor and turbine is given. Mechanical transmission efficiency is given. Uh, combustion efficiency is given as 98%. Heat exchanger effectiveness is given as 80%, uh, and uh, pressure losses at the combustion chamber is 2% of the delivery pressure, and uh, heat exchanger air side is 3% of the com pressure compressor delivery pressure. Heat exchanger gas sieve uh, has uh, pressure drop of 0.04 bar. Ambient conditions are given as 1 bar in 288 Kelvin. So, if you want to draw this in a TS diagram from 1 to 2, it is a isentropic compression. So we have 1, 2 here, and then from 2 to 5, there is a heat addition, and 5 to 3 is also another heat addition to the system, but uh, it happens at a different uh, source of heat, and uh, this would be uh, in a gas turbine cycle this will be in a constant pressure uh, mode so it will be a same line but somewhere here we will have 0.5 and then somewhere here we have 0.3 and then from there it expands to uh, isentropically expands to 0.4 and then it uh, uh, rejects heat uh, at constant pressure uh, to a 0.6 So here we can calculate the turbine pressure ratio. So we have a So it is 1 bar at inlet. Since the pressure ratio is 4, it should be 4 bar here. And there is some pressure drop of say 2% and 3%. And uh, so that means here there will be a drop of uh, 3% and then a drop of 2%. And finally it will be something less than, so that is P3. It will be little less than uh, 4 bar. 
and then from there it uh, expands to uh, 1 bar and 4 should be 1 or rather uh, at this point should be it should be 1 bar and heat exchange on gas side is okay, so this gas side this delta P is uh, the delta P across this is 0 0.04 bar it is what given by this value So P3 can be calculated like P3 is 4 into this 2% uh, and 3% is lost. So at one point it is 0.98 that is 2% is lost and another 3% is lost so that is 0.97. And uh, P4 is uh, delta P is given uh, delta P across 4 1. Sorry, 4, 6 is given as 0 0.04 bar so that means P4 minus P6 is 0 0.04 P6 should be 1 bar because it is left to atmosphere so P4 should be 1.04 bar Now P3 can be calculated. Can you calculate P3? 4 into 0.98 into 0.97. Yes, What is the value of P3? So we can start to calculate from uh, the pressure temperature points at every uh, uh, every salient point. So at uh, two, the temperature can be calculated. So we know T2 by T1 is, uh, first I will derive the equations, we know PV power gamma is equal to constant and also P is equal to P into specific volume equal to RT or P into uh, total volume equal to MRT. So from this I can write PB by RT is equal to the constant. And from here it is P1 V1 power gamma is equal to P2 V2 power gamma. And here P1 uh, we can write have it as capital H so P1 V1 by RT1 equal to P2 V2 by or T2. So here RR can be answered. So we will have to be left with these two equations. Now we can just establish the relationship between uh, pressure ratio and temperature ratio 
and preservation all in this so then it will be easy for us to go further i think pressure pressure to temperature ratio to pressure ratio itself will be sufficient so <coughs> from the temperature can be obtained only from the equation of state so we can rewrite the equation of state as t1 by t2 is equal to t2 v2 by t1 v1 now uh, we have the pressure ratio uh, here and also the volume ratio so volume ratio can be uh, converted to pressure ratio using this so we need to take v2 by v1 so that to t p1 by p2 power 1 by gamma So we can substitute the value here. So we have p2 by p1 into p1 by p2 power 1 by gamma. So to take it into uh, same uh, p2 by p1, we can write this as p2 by p1, and this can be p2 by p1 power negative of 1 by gamma. Now we have p2 by p1, and on the on the exponent we have 1 minus. 1 by gamma and this will be uh, gamma minus 1 by gamma so we have p2 by p1 gamma minus 1 by gamma so this is t2 by t1 now we can calculate t2 this is uh, t1 into pressure ratio t1, p2 by p1 by gamma minus 1 by gamma so t1 is given in the problem is 288 kelvin and pressure ratio of the compressor is given as 4 so this is 4 power gamma value if it is not given for air we can take it as 1.4 so this is 0.4 by 1.4 can you calculate the value of T2 Calculate the value of T2. Four four to six point twenty four. Four to six point two four. So now this is an uh, this we have calculated based on the isentropic process. So we can write this as T2s, and in actual the temperature will be different. So here uh, in this uh, we assumed 1 to 2 as a straight line. So this is actually isentropic, and in actual it will be something like this. And because of this the temperature the, say this is 2 actual, and the at the end of the dotted line, and that will have a temperature higher than the 2s and uh, because of this uh, um, uh, deviation from the isentropic process we will need to uh, supply more uh, energy uh, to the compressor uh, to obtain the same pressure ratio so the end effect is the same 4 bar but uh, if it has been isentropic we need to spend only uh, the difference between this uh, enthalpy h1 to h2s but now we need to spend from h1 to the h2 which is higher h2 is higher than h2s and uh, so this is given by the uh, isentropic efficiency of the compressor so 
uh, I sent out the captions as a compress series actual work by oh, sorry. for a compressor the actual work is higher so that goes into the denominator so we have ideal work by actual so ideal work would be h uh, 2s minus h1 and but in actual we have spent h2 minus h1 so uh, enthalpy uh, is uh, only a function of uh, function of temperature that is cp into t and so this we can consider cp into uh, t2s minus cp into t1 here cp into t2 minus cp into t1 and then you can take all the cp as common and then we will be left with only the temperature terms so on the left hand side here compressor compressor efficiency is given as 0.85 so i'm writing 0.85 here and then we will be left with t2s minus t1 then t2 minus t1 so t2s is uh, we have just calculated it is 426.24 minus t1 is given in the problem that is 248 and t2 we need to find so rewriting this we will be able to find the value of t2 so t2 will be 288 plus Four two six point two four minus two hundred and eighty eight divided by point two four. Can we calculate the value of T two? Can we calculate the value of T2? Is it coming 450.63? 4, 450.63 Kelvin. I am not sure. Okay. So we have calculated T2. So the inlet temperature for the turbine is given as 1100 Kelvin. So we can calculate the temperature at uh, T4. So T3 by T4 is uh, P3 by P4 power gamma minus 1 by gamma. We have calculated the values of P3 and P4 earlier. So and here on the left hand side we know the value of T3. T3 is 1100. 100 Kelvin that is the inlet temperature at the inlet of the turbine and we have T4 and P3 and P4 we had P4 is 1.04 and P3 is 3.8 
here we have com four thing or com four. So value of t four can be calculated as thousand hundred divided by t point eight by one point zero four power point four by one point four. Can you calculate t four? And this is based on the isentropic uh, process, so it is T S four. Two two six point eight zero. Two two six point eight. I think this is too less. Calculation is wrong. I can check. Two two six Is it seven six zero point seven one? Yes, yes, seven six zero point seven one Kelvin, and this is ideal uh, again the ideal temperature. Um, so if I draw in this, so this is four S yes, is what uh, is the vertical straight line that we get, whereas uh, in actual actual case it will go to this point that is four. And here again, the temperature at which and the, the end pressure will be the same uh, uh, in the actual case compared to the ideal case. But the uh, temperature at which we end up will be higher than the uh, ideal case. So T4 will be greater than Ts. So that means so T4s. And that means enthalpy at 4s greater than enthalpy at 4s. And because of this, the turbine output uh, enthalpy power or the energy that is uh, H4 minus uh, this final value will be will become lesser for the actual case. So we have turbine uh, pressure, sorry, isentropic turbine efficiency given, and that will be actual work output divided by uh, ideal work. Ideal work is obtained by uh, H3 minus H4S, whereas in actual we will end up with H3 minus H4. And this uh, turbine efficiency is also given, uh, isotropic efficiency of the turbine is 0.87. So we have 0.87 is equal to, and this can be these enthalpies, enthalpies can be again replaced by the uh, corresponding temperatures. So we will have T3 minus T4 
T3 is uh, known as 1100 Kelvin minus yeah, T4 is uh, 760.71 and sorry this is T4 T4 is, is what uh, we have calculated as 760.7 and now we can calculate the value of T4 that is 0.87 into W and W0 minus 760.71 so just 1100 minus this way. 295.18 All right. Loan. Yeah. Eight zero four point eight. Yeah, eight zero four point eight. So now we have calculated the uh, temperature at the fourth point. So till this temperature we have calculated. Now the we can use the effectiveness. Uh, effectiveness of the heat exchanger that is given so effectiveness is effectiveness of the, of the heat exchanger is actual heat transfer that has happened divided by the maximum heat transfer that is possible so that is given by uh, h4 minus h6 by h4 minus h2 so actually this uh, exhaust steam has come from h4 to h6 this one but if uh, the outlet of this stream is at the same temperature of this two that is uh, t2 then we would have end up with a change in enthalpy of uh, h4 minus h2 so that is the actual case h4 minus h2 and i mean ideal case is h4 minus h2 and actually we are getting only h4 minus h1 so using this um, temperatures we can be able to calculate temperature t6 so effectiveness is 0.80 so this is 0 0.8 0 0.8 is uh, we can have the temperatures t4 minus t6 by t4 minus t2 so t4 is uh, 804.8 minus t6 is unknown and again this is 804.8 minus t2 we have calculated as 450.63 
so now we can rewrite to calculate the value of t6 so that is 804.8 minus 0.8 into 804.8 minus 450.63 can you calculate t6 5 to 1.46 5 to 1.46 this is in Kelvin and now uh, with this uh, we can calculate the energy that is uh, transferred uh, heat energy that is transferred from one stream to other so we know this this temperature and we know this temperature so only H5 uh, is unknown so if H5 is known, we they can calculate how much uh, enthalpy is supplied by the fuel. So that is H3 minus H5. So then we will be able to calculate the efficiencies. So we can write this as uh, over the heat exchanger, the heat uh, lost by one stream is the heat gained by the other stream. So that means uh, H4 minus H6 is H5 minus H2. 4 minus H6 is equal to H uh, sorry H3 minus H5 sorry H5 minus H2 H5 5 into yeah, 100 so now this can be uh, assuming uh, constant Cp we will have T4 minus T6 is equal to T4 minus T2 and T5 is the only unknown T2 is 450.16 and T4 is 804.8 is T6 is we just calculate 521.46 so T5 can be calculated so that is 804.8 minus 521.46 plus 735.97 Now we can calculate the work done by the compressor that is H2 minus H1 or I can write this as Cp into T2 minus T1 and similarly for the turbine Cp into uh, T4 minus T3 uh, minus T4 and for heat added in to the fuel uh, by the fuel we will have H3 minus H5 so T3 minus T5 into Cp so this is Cp is 1.005 into T2 is uh, 450.63 minus 288 is the ambient temperature minus this one is 005 T3 is 
day 3 is uh, 1100 Kelvin so turbine inlet temperature is given as 1100 minus T4 is turbine outlet we have calculated earlier that is 80418 and T3 is same 1000 minus T5 which we have calculated 135.9 so we can calculate all these values WC or compressor of turbine work and we WC is worth 63.44 Okay. Now combustion efficiency is given combustion efficiency is 0.98 and that would be um, Q that is added to the system divided by the uh, enthalpy or the heat energy given in terms of fuel. So this is 0.98. So then we will have Q fuel is equal to Q in by combustion efficiency and that is uh, 365.85 divided by 0.98 okay, now network done is uh, turbine work minus compressor work. Turbine work is given as uh, 296.67 and compressor work is 163.4. So you can calculate the cycle efficiency that is network output divided by uh, heat supply in terms of fuel. So this is 133.23 divided by Q fuel is 373.3. So this is approximately 35 percent efficiency. So some uh, this uh, system of uh, gas turbine is given the, with the isentropic efficiency of compressor, isentropic efficiency of turbine, uh, combustion efficiency of the combustor, and also the heat uh, exchanger effectiveness. So with all this, uh, you should know like what, uh, how to use uh, uh, values like, for example, the compressor efficiency is uh, ideal work by actual work and that is H2S minus H1 by H2 minus H1. So H2S is what we obtain using the this uh, kind of relation, T2 uh, by T1 is the pressure ratio power comma minus 1 by comma. And similarly, uh, same for the turbine work, and the, we can use turbine efficiency and calculate the actual work and the actual uh, final temperature. Like uh, here, we have calculated T4. T4. And similarly, T2 for the actual compressor of temperature. And similarly, using uh, effectiveness, that is actual heat transfer by maximum heat transfer. We have calculated one of the temperatures T6 and uh, using the relation that the heat uh, exchange from one stream is equal to the uh, gain per other stream then we were able to calculate T5 and, and with the combustion efficiency we calculated the fuel input uh, because we have already calculated the Q that is added into the system.
So with all this, we are able to find the cycle efficiency that is 35%. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Just I have a lecture at seven, so I have to take early. Ah, okay, no problem. And uh, you are a, a regular student, BTEC student, or? Yeah, I'm a, a, a faculty. I have enrolled for the program. Okay, and uh, you know your where you are from? Which university? Maharashtra, Kolhapur. Oh. oh, okay. So this is a part of your QAP program or you are just doing now your own interest? No, this is the for a faculty development program. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. In the next problem. I have right, right on cycle with regeneration is given. So before going into this, I would like to explain what is regeneration, what is reheating, and what is intercooler. So there are three intercooling regeneration. So in uh, in Brighton circuit, we generally we have a compressor. And, uh, air is fed in, air is compressed, and it goes to a combustion chamber. And then it's taken to a turbine where it is expanded and given. So there is some Q in here and work done or rather can be drawn as combustion chamber and like this and this is a mechanical shaft connecting these two so through the shaft we are giving some compression work and from the turbine we are giving some um, turbine work and in it we will have um, uh, turbine work minus compressor work and here Q is added so this is a general a break and cycle in case of a closed loop uh, break and cycle we will have uh, we will have this air uh, given back to the intake and combustion will not happen only heat addition will be happening so uh, in terms of open loop uh, the, the the air that is entering or the working fluid of the air that is entering the compressor and the turbine a uh, compressor will be added with fuel and combusted so Till this point, it will be air that is O2 plus and N2, and after combustion, it will become CO2, uh, H2O, N2, and other combustion products. Maybe there will be some O2 in left with and yeah, so on. And so, so this is uh, in open loop. In case of closed loop, there will be only a heat exchanger here. Some of the heat is fed into this uh, air or that is working fluid. This need not be always air, the working fluid can be uh, different also. And still, it will be the same. Component. And then this will be given back to the system. This, there are many, um, many stationary power plant applications with this uh, Brayton cycle, and also all the uh, aircraft, uh, at least all most of the passenger aircraft works with this uh, principle uh, with the break and cycle and there will be multiple stages of uh, compression and multiple stages of expansion which uh, will be seen now. So, so this is a regular uh, break and cycle but in case of intercooling we do some small change and we get some benefits. So say this is C1 compressor, 
it's given here and and this outlet is taken to a intercooler it is cooled and then again given to another compressor such as a C2 and then this is uh, taken to a combustion chamber and then given to a turbine and these all are on the, all are on the same shaft So this is called regular in regular Brayton cycle. If you draw the TS diagram, we will have uh, this uh, constant uh, isotropic uh, compression. And then constant pressure heat addition, and then constant uh, uh, again isentropic uh, expansion. This can be represented also in a PV diagram. So in a PV diagram, we have this compression. Say if there is a single stage compression, it goes like this, and the energy uh, spent on compressing is the integral VDP because it's a flow of work, flowing system. So this entire thing will be the work required to compress from say P1 to P2. Now, if you have a two stage compression, this can be uh, changed like after some pressure. We are cooling this room, that means at constant pressure we cool to some uh, temperature and volume, and then we again compress to pressure 2. So this is P2 and this is P1. And now we are only using compressing to the work done is only the area given by this hatched, single hatch. And we will be uh, in this process, we are. Uh, we are uh, avoiding the this work, and we are say we can also put to this. So pink is uh, the region where we are, uh, which is beneficial that we are avoiding, and green is the actual work done you know, for compressing when we have used two stage. So. Uh, yeah, with the use of uh, with the help of intercooling, we are reducing the compression work. So next we have regeneration. In case of regeneration, we have a second compressor. And after compressor, we have an heat exchanger. And then it is given to a combustion chamber. And then this is taken to a truck. And the the exhaust of the turbine is given to the first heat exchanger and then taken out. So the flow is left on it comes from here one and then it goes to the heat exchangers and then three and then from to the combustion chamber and then to the turbine and then 
back to the heat exchange. So this is heat exchange. So this is when we saw uh, we saw the mass part. Now uh, uh, this is uh, we can easily say from this uh, diagram that uh, we are utilizing the exhaust heat energy from the turbine. Say the turbine outlet temperature is very high, say uh, some 800 Kelvin or something, and then we use it to heat the uh, incoming charge and so that the the combustion chamber we need not spend more energy in the combustion chamber because it is preheated and say the T6 can go down to say um, 600 or 550 Kelvin or something like that so this delta temperature is used to heat the intake charge such that we will reduce the load or burden given to the fuel combustor So now if we draw this uh, TS diagram, we have 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, supply by so this point is 3 and then it goes and then from using combustion chamber we go to point 4 and then we expand to 5 and then uh, at constant pressure we reject the heat at 6 now it is to be noted that T6 is, should be greater than T2 only then the heat exchange can happen so we can see T2 here and that is greater than T6 and next type is reheating uh, here we uh, there will be multiple turbines and in between the turbines we have a, a second combustion chamber so the compressor part is the same the air is splitting and it goes to the combustion chamber then to the turbine and then again it is taken to another combustion chamber CC. so this is CC1 this is the second combustion chamber and then this is turbine 1 and given to another turbine so this is T2 and then it goes out this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 if we draw this in a, this process in a TS diagram we start with the isentropic composition 1 to 2 then 2 to 3 is a constant pressure heat addition and we will end up in 3 and then we uh, expand up in a, with the turbine T1 to a pressure of say uh, to a point of 4 and then we are again adding the heat at constant pressure and then we end up at 5 and then again we expand to a pressure 6 so the 4 is here now uh, we get uh, for the same amount of air or the working fluid we have given we are uh, we are able to extract more uh, energy from it so that means using reheating we will benefit and mainly we will have more uh, specific power output whereas in case of regeneration uh, we are reducing the heat that we have given and uh, in case of intercooling we are reducing the compressor work so finally all this will be will lead to in improved efficiency of the, uh, of the uh, 
cycle overall cycle but uh, it uh, comes in different uh, methods and in case of preheating again there could be there will be uh, in actual system there will be some mixing of intercooling three generation preheating so uh, sometimes this uh, cc2 uh, some some amount of the outlet of t1 is uh, taken for re re regeneration and so on and there will be some intercooling happening before and uh, in actual there will be mix up all these uh, concepts i hope the things are clear So next we have a Brayton cycle with regeneration using air as, an, as the working fluid uh, and has a pressure ratio of 7. The minimum and maximum temperature in the cycle are 310 and 1150 Kelvin. Assuming an isentropic uh, efficiency of 75% for the compressor and 82% for the turbine and an effectiveness of 65% uh, for the regenerator. Determine the air temperature at the turbine exit the net work output at the thermal efficiency. So, uh, have a look at this problem and I'll be back in some time. Say three or four minutes.
So at right hand cycle with regeneration, uh, I will draw the schematic first. So there will be a compressor. Here is given in. and from here it goes to a and from here it goes to a heat exchanger and then it goes to the combustion chamber and then goes to a turbine and then it goes uh, sorry this goes back to the so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. To represent an TS diagram, we have constant uh, isotopic uh, compression, then constant pressure heat addition for kilo point three and then again uh, constant uh, pressure heat addition till a point four and then isentropic expansion uh, to five and then some heat rejection to six So here the minimum and maximum temperatures of the cycle are given and also the pressure ratio is given. So pressure ratio is P2 by P1 uh, unless there is some pressure drop that is uh, talked upon then it is same as P4 by P5. So these are same these are some the minimum and maximum temperature of the cycle is given. So minimum temperature should be T1 that is 310 Kelvin and maximum temperature should be T4 and that is 1140 Kelvin. Assuming the isentropic efficiency of 70% for compressor and uh, so the compressor it is 0.75 whereas for the turbine it is 0.8 and the effectiveness is uh, 0.65 for the generator uh, determine the air temperature of the turbine exit the air temperature at turbine exit ok so turbine exit is T5 T5 and the network output W net and the thermal efficiency So to start with, uh, we know T2 equal to T1 into P2 by P1 power gamma minus 1 by gamma and this is T1 is uh, 310 into pressure ratio is 7 and power gamma is like 0.4 by 1.4. So this is T2. This is 540.5 Kelvin. And uh, we also know So this is only a isentropic uh, temperature, but in actual it will be different. So 
Pino no Accomplice Revision to use idea mark and I have to mark Here, uh, ideal work is H2 minus H1 in actual twenty. Sorry, H2 is minus H1. In actual, it will be H2 minus H1. So, so compressor efficiency is 0.7. So this is 0.75 equal to uh, we can write for uh, 2s minus 4 not even we will write t2 minus t1 so this is t2s is 540.5 minus t1 is 310 kelvin we will write t2 minus 310 so t2 can be written as 310 plus 540.5 minus 310 divided by 0 0.75 so t2 can be calculated so this is 617.3 kelvin Similarly, uh, T4 by T5 equal to P4 by P5 power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So T5 is, so this is asymptotic. Uh, okay, just. T4 divided by pressure ratio power gamma minus 1 by gamma. So T4 is. Uh, it is a maximum temperature of the cycle so that is given as 1150 and durable pressure ratio is 7 power 0.4 by 1. This is uh, 615.5 kilo and using the compressor turbine efficiency we can calculate the actual uh, temperature at T5 so uh, this is uh, ideal work by sorry this is actual work by Actually, it could be T5 minus T4. Sorry, T4 minus T5. I will be writing like this T4 minus T4 minus. Tapping efficiency is given as uh, 82%. So, this is 0.82 is equal to. T4 is given as 1150 minus T5 is on 1 and T5 is 659.5. So that is 1150 minus 0 0.82 into 1150 minus 659.5. Can 
So this is 747.8 Kelvin. So this is T5. Effectiveness of the heat exchanger is an actual heat transfer divided by the maximum possible heat transfer. So, actual heat transfer is uh, H5 minus H5 minus H6, but in actual, uh, yeah, in maximum case, it will be H5 minus H2. The effectiveness of heat exchanger is given as uh, 0.65, 65%. This is T5 minus T6 divided by T5 minus T2. T5 is minus 747.8. Six directly seven forty seven point eight minus T two. The value of T two is six hundred and seventeen point three. So T six is seven forty seven point eight minus point six five into seven forty seven point eight minus six hundred and seventeen point three. So this is T six. This is 663 Kelvin. Now <clears throat> can we know the heat transfer in the heat exchanger? Uh, same for both the streams. So it is H5 minus H6. Should be same as H3 minus H2. Uh, so this is also the temperature. Uh, so T5 minus T6 is also. T3 minus T2. So temperature T5 is uh, known that is 747.6 minus T6 is 663 Kelvin. This is equal to T3 minus T2. T3 is unknown but T2 is known. T2 is 617.3 So T3 is equal to 747.6 minus 663 plus 617.3. This is 701.9 Kelvin.
so now we have found the temperature at all the points now we can start calculating the uh, network output and the thermal efficiency so we have already calculated turbine uh, turbine exit temperature and that is 747.8 So the problem of this game is 783 but we are not getting it. So it's good. Okay. Go to the next problem. Okay. So uh, compressor work out for this H2 minus H1 that is one of CP of T2 minus T1 that is 1.005 into T2 is uh, 617.3 minus 310 and similarly turbine work is H5 minus H4 or H4 minus H5 this is CP into T4 minus T5 CP is 1.005 T4 is Kp is 17 is T4 is the maximum temperature of the cycle and that is 1140 and similarly Q in can be calculated as H3 minus sorry H4 minus H3 H4 minus H3 and that is Cp into T4 minus T3 that is 1.005 into T4 is again 1150 minus T3 is This is 308.8 kilojoule per kilogram. Mm -hmm. This is 404 pound. 
Then close out the program. This is 450.3 kJ per kg and W net is W turbine minus W compressor and that is 404.2 minus 398.8. And efficiency, cycle efficiency is uh, W net minus Q. W net is for uh, 95, 95.4 divided by 450.3. Now we see this is uh, 1.2.1. So this is roughly 21.2%. In the next problem, we have a stationary gas turbine power plant which operates on an ideal residue generative breakdown cycle with the air as a working fluid. Air enters the compressor at 95 kPa and 290 Kelvin, and the turbine at uh, 760 kPa and 1100 Kelvin. Heat is transferred to air from an external source at a rate of 75,000 kJ per second. Determine the power delivered by this plant. Assuming constant specific heats for air at room temperature and accounting for the variation of specific heats with temperature. So to solve this uh, problem with the variation of specific heats with temperature, we need to have the uh, just, uh, table uh, enthalpy charts for air. So I think first we will solve in constant specific heats and then you can see that so <coughs> in this break and cycle there is air entering into a compressor And then there is a heat exchanger and then it goes to a combustion chamber. So this is <coughs> two, this is three, and then it goes to a turbine. And then the this is turbine and then it goes to this heat exchanger.
Well, uh, since the effectiveness is 100%, this implies that T2 is equal to T6. That is the maximum possible uh, heat transfer is occur. <coughs> the air enters at the compressor at 95 kilopascal and 290 kelvin. That means T1 is 290 Kelvin and P1 is uh, 1900 and uh, similarly of the turbine uh, inlet it is AT4 is 1100 Kelvin and P4 is uh, 76 Kelvin Heat is transferred to the air from an external source at the rate of scientific level per second. So Q in S or Q dot is equal to 75,000 kilojoules per second or this is 75 megawatt. So now we need to calculate the power delivered by this plant. So T2 can be calculated as T1 into T2 by P1 power gamma minus 1 by gamma. And here T1 is 290 Kelvin. Do the pressure ratio is given as uh, okay. pressure ratio is not given, but the pressures uh, both the pressures are given so then it would be 7.6 bar divided by 0.95 so uh, and then on the power we have 0.4 by 1.5 this t2 can be calculated so now we need to calculate the Five hundred and twenty five point three Kelvin. <coughs> Next, uh, we can calculate the uh, T five. So T four by T five is T four by T five power gamma minus one by gamma, and uh, here T five is equal to uh, P T. Or is 1100 divided by the, the pressure terms. So the pressure ratio is 7.6 by 0.15. The whole power 0.4 by So this is 607.2 Kelvin. Now uh, W net is <coughs> W uh, turbine minus W compressor, and for compressor it is uh, sorry for the turbine it is H4 minus H5. And for compressor it is H2 minus H1 and we can take all Cp into temperatures so this is Cp into T4 minus T5 minus O minus of T2 plus T1 and this is 1.005 into T4 is 1100 Kelvin minus 607.2 minus t2 is 525.3 kelvin plus t1 is 290 so talking it
so this is 258.8 kilojoule per kilogram uh, so this is the unit uh, in terms of So we know the heat added in terms of uh, rate per second. So here also we need to find the Q in and then calculate the power output. H3 minus H2 is equal to H5 minus H6. So here H2 and H6 are same. And we can calculate the value of H3. So H3 is equal to H5 minus H6 plus H. So these two are same. So H3 is equal to H5. So that means T3 equal to T5. And that is 6.7.4. Okay. So Q minus H4 minus H3. H4 minus H3. And that is Cp into T4 minus T3. Cp is 1.005 and uh, T4 is SMR. It's 1100 Kelvin. And T3 is 607.2 Kelvin. So this is 495.26 kilojoule per kilogram. Now we can calculate the cycle efficiency. That is 258.8. So the cycle efficiency is given by actual network output by the heat input. So here the heat input is 495.26. And work output is 258.8. So this will give you some cycle efficiency. This is uh, 0.5225. So 52.2 percent. Now uh, the Q dot is given as 75 megawatt. So that means W net dot is associated to W cycle, net cycle, so the efficiency of the cycle into Q dot. So it is efficiency of the cycle is 0.522 into Q minus Q dot is uh, 75. So this is 39.2 So this is the output of the power plant. So I hope uh, this is clear. Thank you for attending.